Is it wrong that I bought an action figure for a six inch scale plastic Molotov cocktail? Because I did, and this is the Marvel Legends tracksuit mafia figure. This figure has an interesting tale behind it. Apparently he was very difficult to get when it first released. If you didn't pre-order it, it sold out, or there was even difficulties with, I don't know. There's a story behind this just not being widely available. And then all of a sudden, all of the Ollies across the country decided to light up and just put all of the tracksuit mafias that were hidden somewhere in a warehouse, I don't know, on the clearance store shelves. So I was able to get this guy for $10 and I watched the Hawkeye series on Disney Plus. It was kind of fun. But what I like him for is he's just like a random nameless thug that you can put in other scenes with action figures. And along those same lines, it comes with a very, very impressive accessories kit that includes a golf club, a machete, a baseball bat, and yes, a Molotov cocktail, plus two additional head sculpts. Oh yeah, and I also forgot a crowbar. How could I forget the crowbar? So in terms of accessories, like this figure is just worth it for that alone, especially at the $10 price point. But from my understanding now is that a lot of people have already ravaged Ollie's for these action figures because they are such good goons or thugs that you can just have in the background. But I don't want this video just to be talking about the accessories because I think I've already talked enough about the accessories. They're fantastic. If you can find this figure just for those alone, go get it. But what about the rest of the tracksuit mafia guy? He's kind of interesting. He's got double jointed elbows. Let's just give those a try real quick and get a nice good crunch up there. What about the double jointed legs? They're pinless by the way, which is kind of nice. They do an okay job. He's a little bit wobbly in the waist. And what you notice is that when you move him, he kind of clicks into place on the waist swivel, which is something kind of interesting. And then when he cranes back with the ab crunch, there's a lot of range of movement here, but what you notice is that the lines of the jacket, because this is a tracksuit after all, it's kind of flowy, it goes with movement and stuff like that, it doesn't lend itself very well to the action figure posability because everything just kind of doesn't seem to line up. And if we swivel at the thigh, you can see that the tracksuit lines don't match up. And this could be an immersion breaking thing for a lot of people. And for me in particular, it's just, it, it's not the look that I like to go for. I like it when action figures try to hide some of those flaws through designing around those limitations. I understand that this is an MCU character, so you're going to want to have some accurate representation of what the actual outfit from the show look like, but I think there could have been some compromises in terms of just how sharp these legs were pleated in the front, because again, that's something that doesn't really necessarily scream tracksuit. It screams almost pants suit, um, <laughs> which I'm guessing these are part reused from some other action figure within the Marvel Legends line. But even though I don't like when these stripes don't line up, the fact that it goes from all the way to the shoulders, all the way down to the ankles is a really cool paint detail. And if you get really close to the figure, you can see like the waistband of the tracksuit, there is just a slightly different version of red, which is cool, like it's, it adds a little bit of detail. It breaks up this red blob of tracksuit and it gives you some visual distinction between the top half and the lower half of the figure. And of course, if we look really closely, we have the zip up. Uh, one of them has a little touch of paint. The red one, which I think could have used that touch of paint, doesn't have it. Um, but, but you do just get a little bit of it. Double zips on the hoodies. Now, another interesting limitation of this figure is he does have a lot of accessories, but it doesn't come with alternate fist sculpts, which should have seemed like an obvious one. If this is just your nameless, again, background thug, there could have been a lot of options with hands, but for now we just get one fist that's mostly closed so you can hold on to any of the accessories that he comes with. But then we also have like a more relaxed open hand that doesn't do a very good job of holding anything in his accessory kit. So it would have been nice to have an additional hand similar to his right that would have allowed you to hold two weapons securely in each hand as you're posing him for photos or just posing him in your displays. And speaking of posing, when I was posing up this figure, it was kind of difficult. Again, because we're dealing with all of these lines and track suits and folds in the clothes. It just felt stiff, it felt stilted, and having him stand in the background is really going to be your best bet as filler. And the last piece that goes along with accessories is the head sculpts. Now the two human faces, they have more range of motion with them, but when it comes to the ski mask, 
because of the way that it drapes around the neck, you're not going to have a lot of ability to pose him to the side or anything like that. It just gets stuck on the way that the jackets zip open. So ultimately, what do I think about this figure? Accessories set, amazing amazing accessory set, but when it comes to the actual figure himself, I'm left a little underwhelmed. It's good to have some nameless goons that our heroes can beat up when I'm posing things and stuff like that, but ultimately, this figure just isn't a real standout. There could have been, I don't know, it just feels like it could have been pushed so much further, but maybe I'm missing out because this is a troop builder after all, and I didn't build the troops with this, I just have one figure. So maybe if this were standing amongst many other of the Tracksuit Mafia members, maybe the scale, the size, the volume of the characters is something that is the impressive part and not necessarily each unique individual character alone. But let me know what you think. Do you think this stands alone as a figure itself or does it need to be part of a troop? And while you're commenting on the video, please hit that subscribe or follow button because I'm gonna be posting more videos about six inch scale action figures, G.I. Joe classified Marvel Legends, which we just talked about, and also other action toys, action figures, collectibles, and blasters. But that's all I know about the Tracksuit Mafia. Again, get it for the accessory kit, or if you can somehow get your hands on a ton of these, maybe that's maybe that's the, the feature of this figure that I'm missing out on. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.